What is up guys, Speed here, back with another video. And today we are going to be looking at one of the most prominent changes of patch 7.22, the new Aghanim Scepters. Now, there was a lot of reworks as well, which I've decided to add into this list. Hopefully I didn't miss any. Um, I tried to cover all of them. It is a pretty large list. The description or a picture of the overall list should be down in the description below. But let's start at the top. Before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros over at GameLoop.com. We have thousands of guides that can teach you the game of Dota 2 in depth and help you gain MMR much quicker than you usually would. Now let's jump into it. So at the top of the list are what I think are acts that are quite viable most games. These are Death Prophet, Dragonite, Grimstroke, Dark Willow, Beastmaster, and Phoenix. Now I'm not going to cover every single hero in depth, I'm just going to give the reasons why I think Axe is actually applicable on these heroes, and why, to be straightforward and very honest with you guys, most of the Axe are just not worth it. They're just not worth it. But we'll get into that. First off, Death Prophet naturally can buy Axe because after you pick up a Yule Scepter and maybe one other defensive item such as a BKB, you naturally have this weird state where you want to buy one item, whether it's an Octarine Core, Blink Dagger, Solar Crest, you have this like weird item gap and I think the new Axe gives you a lot of burst potential, decent stats, and overall is a solid third or fourth item pick up on Death Prophet. And the same thing kind of applies to DK. Once you pick up your first small item, whether it's Blinker Shadow Blade and your BKB, maybe a Drums, you can kind of decide between like AC, Mjolnir, and now you can even decide for potentially an Axe. And I think this kind of fits into his build. Grimstroke also, after you buy a Glimmer Cape or your Aether Lens, you can look into an Axe against certain heroes. I would recommend against maybe Troll Warlord, Phantom Assassin, Spectre, Terror Blade, Morphling, Luna, any of the very strong agility cores. I would recommend picking up Ags on Grimstroke. And note that with your ultimate, you can get two of the copies. So make sure you use your ultimate and then use the new Aghanim Scepter ability. Dark Willow can now attack with her Shadow Realm, meaning that you get the bonus damage and attack range from it. This is quite good. Similar to these other heroes, all you really need on Willow is one or two defensive items. And then you kind of look to build into DPS or like larger luxury items such as Hex. And I think Ags makes a lot of sense on this hero, right? Staying in Shadow Realm is crucial on Dark Willow. Well, using your combo, like your Root and Stun, or Yule's Root Stun Ultimate into Shadow Realm, I think this will provide you with a ton of DPS potential and pretty decent survivability. Beastmaster now has infinite axes with his axe. I actually played a game with this and I soloed Roche in like five seconds. Pretty insane because the damage stacks over time. It's, it's pretty crazy. I recommend you try it out. Phoenix can now cast Sunray during his Ags Egg, and he also has the other things too. I believe he still gets the extra hits with the Ags as well, meaning that if anyone's trying to hit you, they have to hit you more times in the Egg, and you can burn them with the Sunray, meaning that you're doing an absurd amount of AoE damage while in the Egg. Not only that, Egg got buffed as well, so I think this Ags is very, very legit. Tiny basically chucks every tree that he's standing next to, and with heroes such as Darkseer, Enigma, Tidehunter, anyone who has AoE damage, I think this is fantastic with because you can splash everyone down. Clinks, whenever he comes out of Invis, spawns two skeletons, and these skeletons are great for doing some burst damage. Once again, I think the Ags, the importance of Ags and thinking about it as an item is that you don't want to buy it as a first item typically, typically, because the problem with it is it gives you no direct offensive or defensive capability, so you kind of need it as like a luxury item that adds on after a BKB or after your initial burst or defensive items. And for Clinks, I think once you pick up your Dragonlance and maybe a Deso or a, a BKB or a Medallion, you can look into Axe so that you have better pickoff potential even when your ultimate is not available. Ember Spirit, it's very weird. You get five remnants and you can cast them farther with no mana. And I think this is pretty legit, especially if you get it as like a fifth or sixth item with your level 25. It makes a lot of sense. You can have a crazy amount of remnants, do a ton of burst damage, and if you buy a refresher orb in addition, your burst potential is through the roof. Broodmother, I think you can buy Ags if you go Spider's build. Otherwise, it's pretty illogical, in my mind at least. So if you go Spider's build, I think you can buy it as a 5th or 6th item to get extra webs and more movement speed. Mars as a hero, all you kind of need is like a Vlad's and a Deso or a Vlad's BKB blink, something along those lines. And then after that, uh, you do plenty of damage with your W. So I think buying the Ags to lower the cooldown is quite good. Bane Ags already was decent for like core Bane. So if you're going to play core Bane, I think the Ags is actually 
probably one of the best pickups, especially now that the animation is much, much better. This allows you to just get a lot more ultimates off and in general have a better time as a core bane. Brewmaster, his Ags now gives all the previous benefits that it used to, like all the abilities, but now also gives the Broodlings 100 movement speed, which is a ton. 100 movement speed allows you to get key tornadoes off, get key boulders off, basically just keep on top of units. And it's a really nice buff that I think is definitely one of the better axe changes. Now we're kind of moving into territory where things get kind of sketch. Uh, I don't think they're that legitimate, to be perfectly honest. Maybe you guys can prove me wrong or you think better, but here, let's go. TA, she can teleport to any trap every so often. It's just, can you really buy Ags over a Hurricane Pike or an Orchid or a Daedalus or a Nullifier? I don't think so. I really don't think so, unless you're split pushing for whatever reason. IO's Ags gives him unlimited balls, which is really good for split pushing and farming, but as is, I don't think you really need it more. They're basically a 100% uptime anyway, so it's okay, but you kind of need mech, spirit vessel, and, and those type of items. Spectre as a 5th or 6th item probably got one of the better carry ags. A lot of the carries got ags this patch. Um, and I think if you have 5 items and you need just some like map pressure, like they have a lot of split push, it makes a lot of sense because then you can just defend lanes without using haunt. Pretty legitimate in that regard. Uh, other than that though, you can't buy it early, that's the thing. Same thing for PA, you have to buy it as like a 5th or 6th item where if they have a lot of things you need to purge for whatever reason, like slows and, or maybe you could just like blur dodge things because it's instant. It has its viability, but you can't buy it early. It just makes no sense to buy this over Satanic or BKB, it's Deso, it just doesn't work. Axe got a change, now Battle Hunger is AoE. Uh, I believe that was about it. Um, it's okay, but once again, like, where do you fit Axe into an Axe build? You need Crimson, Pipe, Shadowblade, BKB, Blink, all, all these other items that I think are a lot more value. Wind Ranger got her Axe changed from a lowered cooldown on her ultimate into two Wind Run charges, which I think the lower cooldown on her ultimate, now that it's just part of her hero, is a buff. That's how I see it. But this is pretty niche. Against specific physical damage lineups, you're basically invincible forever. Um, and not only that, with the level 20 talent giving you invisibility on Winter Run, I think it has some capability for allowing you to kite around fights, because you can go at, into invis, shackle use your ultimate, and then if you get gone on, you click it again. Decent, but... Once again, the argument is, do you have your BKB and MKB yet? Like, would you trade that for a BKB or an MKB? Moving on, we have Underlord. Honestly, I'm slightly confused still by how his ultimate works, but I think it just gives damage or like half the damage values to everyone around him, which is decent, but your hero wants auras. I'd rather see my Underlord have a Greaves, Crimson, or Pipe than an Axe. <laughs> Terrorblade, this one's weird because it seems good at first where it pushes like a sound wave in an AoE, fearing people. But the thing is, as is, people try to kite out your ultimate, so you're pushing them away. I don't know exactly how good it is, I haven't seen it fully in action yet. But also it has this issue where if you go Roche and you pop meta, everyone's gonna know you're Roching because you're sending out some global wave. So, I, I don't know. It's just sketch to me and once again, I don't know where you fit an Ags into a Tower Blades item build besides like some synth, uh, like the 6,000 gold item late game. Same thing for AM, you just can't buy this item. It just makes no sense. Go play Turbo, alright? If you want to buy it on AM, go play Turbo. <laughs> you just need a BKB or uh, an Abyssal or Scotty or Manta. Any of these items are just much better than Aghanim Scepter. Arc Warden, once again, I know I keep repeating myself, but the problem with Axe is it just doesn't give you that much. And having a rune spawn in front of you, whoop de doo you get a regen when you're full HP, nice. You just spend 4,000 gold to get a full HP regeneration rune. Like, come on, come on. You know better than that. That just makes no sense. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you'll prove me wrong on this, but... If, <sighs> ET can now stomp with a BKB. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, I don't know why you would buy Ags over an actual BKB to stomp, though. So... Yeah, I... I I don't get it. I really don't get it. Night Stalker, he can have Void in a AoE and it lowers the cooldown by 2 seconds, which is okay. It's like you can do a lot of AoE damage and control the fights because the mini stun duration is also increased from 0.1 to 0.6, which is good. It's good, but it's good enough, right? Once again, it's always the question because Nullifier, an item like Nullifier, which is only, what, 500 more gold than Ags, allows you to basically doom someone if you can get your silence on them. So I'd rather doom someone then void mini stun them for 0.5 seconds, even if it's in an AoE. 
Um, and that's kind of how I look at it. So for Morphling, you get reduced cooldown, um, what, 35% and a mana cost reduction by 50%. In addition, you get extra cast range, but once again, like, spell casting Morphling is just not really a thing, right? Strength Morphling, which was the thing a while ago, like offlane strength Morphling, was okay, but having CDR is just mediocre as is. The point of the hero, and I think what's good about it, is you can switch in between your enemy spells and your spells, and you don't need CDR because you're just switching in between them. So, once again, just buy a different item. Pangolier, what a joke. Please just buy any other item that lets you actually live instead of just shooting some beams out of uh, out of you in four directions. It's like, uh, it doesn't even do full damage. Like, at least if it did full damage, it'd be like, okay, you can burst someone with this, but it, it does half. Like, I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe it, if all four hit, if you're in the middle, I, I don't know if that's how it works, but if that's how it works, maybe it has some viability. But other than that, I question the sags. Slaughter makes a puddle. Are you kidding me? A puddle? Like, what? A puddle? 4,200 gold? For what? A puddle. That's right. You could have a puddle or magic immunity. You choose. Monkey King summons little monkey kings. I don't know who thought this was good. It's like uh, the Nutcrackers. There's like more and more. No, not the Nutcrackers. Whatever the toy is where it like comes out of the top. That's just like Monkey King. It... Uh, he just summons more monkey kings that just stand there. If you can control them, I'd be like, okay, you could zone a support out of a fight. But instead, the only thing they're good for is like pushing waves. And that's it. And you know what else is good for pushing waves? Mjolnir or Meteor Hammer or a Radiance. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, I know you guys are going to get mad about this. Troll Warlord. Stop. 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 I I'm reading all these comments. Stop. <laughs> No, it's not good, okay? It's not good. I understand Troll is like a... D he's a pretty good laner. I... Okay, to be honest, I put this lower than I should have. This should be at least like C or B. It's decent in some games. It's like a Weaver Axe almost. But <laughs> Troll support, so questionable. Because in the early game, before you get your items, unless you dumpster the laning stage, I mean like take the power at six minutes dumpster. <laughs> Do you really want a Troll Warlord running around? Now, I know there's a uh, European 2B, I believe he's he's a master of this hero as a support. Maybe you guys could go talk to him. But for me, no. Absolute trash. Do not buy this. Don't play troll as a support. I'm probably going to try it, but don't try it. And um, yeah, take my word on that. And finally, the worst axe of this patch, Lycan. Please, don't argue me on this. It's so pathetic. You summon two wolves in a wave that you can't even control. You're just feeding people two wolves. No, it barely pushes the wave. It barely pushes the wave. Okay? If you want to split push, just buy a Necro or like buy a Helm of the Dominator and go send it down a wave for half the price. Don't buy Axe. Don't do it. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> All jokes aside, thank you guys for watching. Tell me if you agree or disagree with how I rank these ags. I feel like even though the patch has only been out for a very short period of time, there is a pretty good feel for what is actually good and what is bad already. Because um, it's it's hard to make these ags. I don't blame Ice Frog. It's hard to make a good ags that is not only cost efficient, but worth it on carries, right? Especially all these carries. It's hard because carries don't want to have like 10 all stats and HP and mana. It just doesn't really fit their builds so i respect them for trying i think it's cool big buff to rubik right rubik can steal all these ags now that's hype but other than that thanks for watching if you enjoyed please do like and subscribe and of course check out the game leap website for other great content like this and especially if you're trying to learn the game of dota in depth it is much better than this youtube channel see you there